Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farah Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. So as we are looking on the different standard methods in your book, in this video we are going to see the fourth standard method that is the linear search method. By definition, linear search method is used to search a specific item in your list. Search an item in a given list. For example, if you want to search for a name in a list of students, a list of students having 30 students with their names, and you have different names, Ali, Ahmed, Sean, Mustafa, and you want to search your specific name in this particular list, so you can use a linear search method. Other than that, you can also search a number in a given list of numbers. Numbers. Let's suppose you have a big list of 100 numbers, and you want to see that if 37 is present in your list or not. So you can go for a linear search method in order to do that. Now quickly moving towards the code of linear search so that we can understand how it is going to work for us. Okay, so here we go. This code is present in your book. According to this code, you have to find out student name in a given list of names. So what will you do? First of all, you are going to output a message. Let's start with the first line of code here. You will start with an output message and you will ask the user to enter his desired name that he wants to search. Please enter name to find. And when the user is going to give a certain name, let's suppose he says Ali. I am a user and I say that please find Ali for me. So the first variable is name variable in which I'm going to store whatever the user says me or types as a name to search. Now, the second thing is a found variable. A found is a Boolean variable that stores a value false initially because it is just a start of searching. At the very initial level, you have to make this found variable false. And when you will find your uh, desired name, then you will make it true. So that you will come to know that you have find the desired name. So in this way, we can change this variable depends upon our result. And if you are unable to find the desired name, then this variable will remain false. Now. Another thing is the counter. Counter is initiated with number one or the first value. Why we initiated it with number one? Because we have to go through whole list of numbers. Sorry, names in this case. So let's suppose my list has 10 names. So it will start from one and it will goes to 10 in order to search the name. Okay. In every case, this is going to vary depends upon how many items you have in your list. So let's assume that in my list, I have five names. To make it a little shorter, in order to save our time, let's make a list of five names. And let me just write down names here. The first name is Ahmed, then Mohammed. Then Shahzeb, then Ali, and then Monib. Let's suppose these are the five names in my list. And Ali wants to search his name. Is his name present in the list or not? So we need to see that. This time I have showed you all the names in the list. But in your case, you don't know about if the name is in your list or not. 
but in order to make you understand the code i have already showed you all the names so at fourth index index number 4 we are going to found, find out our desired name ali now let's see how this code is going to work for us here you have a repeat until loop why we have a repeat until loop because if it will work till just see this condition it's a loop it's an iterative loop it will run till this condition becomes true the until condition and what is the until condition it has two conditions to check one it is going to check for the found value if the found becomes true found becomes true means that you have found the desired name so if this value becomes true you are going to get out of the loop or in other case if this value remains false but the counter becomes greater than class size let's suppose my class size is right now 5 students and if the counter becomes 6 it's it, it is incremented to 6 so now there is nothing to search so in both the cases you have to go out of the loop so this is the end condition that we are setting here if found becomes true you have to go out because you have searched for the desired name or if the counter becomes greater than class size so there is nothing to search now your name is not in the desired list so in both the cases you have to go out of the loop this is my end condition either this becomes true either this becomes true so in both the cases if only one condition is true i will go out of my loop now let's quickly move towards the inside of my loop what i am going to search for if every iteration in every iteration what i am going to do i am going to check for my name and for the name in the list that is student name this list has a name my list has a name of student name and i need to check for every index at first it is student name counter let me write it over here for iteration number one let's do it one by one to make it easy to understand first thing i'll search for student name one and at index number one the name that i have is here it's ahmed so my name stored in my list at index one is ahmed i am going to see that if my name is equal to the value in the variable name so is ahmed equals to ali or not because ali is the value of the variable name so i'm going to compare both the values ahmed and ali are not equal it's false so in this case if the if condition is false then you are going for else you are not going to run this then code you are going to move towards the else code and else code says that please increment the counter and go to the next value so now it will be iteration number 2 in iteration number 2 the counter value is now 2 so you are going to check again for the second value in your student name list so the student name for index number 2 is equals to muhammad here you can see in my list so i need to check if muhammad is equal to the value that is present in the variable name that is ali the variable name will remain same why because this is input of the user ali now in the second iteration again the condition becomes false so we will quickly move towards the else code else code is going to say that please increment your counter and do it again do the comparison again and remember that every time you are going to check for the these two conditions and both the times in iteration 1 and iteration 2 the found is false and the counter is less than class size that is 5 it is 1 or it is 
since both the conditions are false so you are not supposed to go out of loop you will remain in the loop so now this is third iteration for third iteration the counter value is now 3 so we are going to check for if condition again student name for third index is equals to let's go to our list check for the third value for it is shahzeb is shahzeb equals to the value in the variable name which is equals to ali if condition again false so in false case you have to go for the else code else code says that increment the counter and check for the until condition so when you increment your counter now the counter becomes 4 sorry i'm writing it here counter becomes 4 so is 4 greater than 5 no this condition is false and we know that the found value is also false since we did not find the name yet so both the conditions are false that's why we are again going to repeat our work so for fourth iteration the counter value is 4 so we are going to check for student name 4 equals to now in this case you can see that at number 4 in my list I have Ali so I will write Ali here and I will compare it with the value in my name variable that is also Ali now if condition is true my condition is true here so when the if condition is true what will you do just look at here if the if condition becomes true then you have to run this code then code then code says that now make the value of false true so when the false value becomes true you will go down and you are going to see for your until condition so now the found value is true here so remember that when found value becomes true or in other case if the counter value is greater than 5 then in either cases what you have to do you have to go out of the loop so the first condition is true now found value is true so what will you do you will go out of your loop so here we go now we are not moving towards the fifth iteration why because the found value is true now when we will go out of the loop then here you will see some line of code if found if found means that if found is true found will be having two values either you have searched or you have find the name in the list or you haven't find the name in your list so in both the cases if the name is there in your list the found is true but if the name is not in your list so it will be false so you will get two values when you will get out of the loop but in the true case then code is going to run and in the false case this else code is going to run so in my case since the found value is true so i am going to run the this then code then code says that you are going to print a message name let me write the result here for you this is your output message on my screen to a user let's suppose this is user's screen it will show name instead of the variable the value of the variable is printed so it's written ali found at everything that is in quotations will be printed as it is found at position after that you have counter counter is a variable its value will be printed so when i came out of the list the counter value was 4 
because it was fourth iteration when I finished. At fourth iteration, found value became true and I went out of the loop. So that's why counter value is printed at four and then in the list will be printed as it is, as did this thing is in the quotations. So this is going to be the, this one is going to be the user's output. Ali found at position 4 in the list. So this is how the linear search method is going to work for us. Now, I can also do one thing in other case if Ali is not in my list or I have some other name. Let's suppose Hashim. At number 4, I have Hashim. So what we will do? Iteration 4 will become false or the condition in iteration number 4 if I will check for fourth value this is just when there is no result in my list it was Hashim which is not equals to Ali that the user entered so again the if statement becomes false found will never be true Iteration number 4 will end with increment in the counter's value. So now the final iteration. I just want to make you clear for both the conditions. One, if the value has been there in the list and if the value is not there, then what will happen? Iteration 5, remember it is the final iteration or the last one because the list has only 5 values. The counter is 5. Again, you are going to check for student name at index number 5, which is the last value. In my list, the last value is Munib. Munib is not equals to the value that is in the name variable. The name variable is Ali. So again, my if condition is false. So now the counter is going to increment with 6. And the found will remain false. Found will never be true until you are not going to find the name. Now, look at here. I'm just removing everything that I have written before to make it clear for you. Now, once you came out of the loop, you will check here the until condition. In the until condition, in the second case, Found remains false, but the counter value is 6 now, which is greater than 5, class size. So when it is greater than class size, you will go out of loop because the second condition is true. So since you are using OR, OR means that only one condition needs to be true to get out of the loop. So when counter is greater than class size, you will go out of loop and you are going to check for found. And in this case, since there is no name that you have typed in the list, that's why found remains false. And remember that if, if condition is false, the else code is going to run. So in the second case, the output will become, I'm writing down here, else will say name not found. The value of name will be shown to the user Ali and then not found will be printed as it is. So this is both the results. One is when you get the name in your list and the other when you not, when you are failed to get the name in the list. So this is how a linear search algorithm is going to work. I hope that everything is clear to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we are going to see the last standard method that is in your book, which is bubble sort, another important method. So stay tuned, stay connected, and do not forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.